Okay, we're going to do more electrical engineering. We're going to introduce a new concept called resistance. Um, we're going to have two equations, one you know already, introduce a second one, and then the third one will pop out. And the third one's a little tricky, but I'll try to give you mental images of how it works. And the reason we're going to dig deeper into electrical engineering is we have that, we have that power from that generator at the steam power plant, and now we've got to get it to the person's house without losing a lot in the transmission. So we've got to do some really cool electrical engineering to, to, to make sure we don't lose a lot of power. Okay, so the guy who we're, we're introducing into the world, into our world, is resistance. And let's build, the, let's take the first equation we know in electrical engineering, which was in the demonstration of resistance heating, we had voltage times current equals power. And in that scenario, we had a voltage of 120 volts in the house. We dropped our, we dropped the resistance, which we're going to talk about in a second, down, and that caused 10 amps to flow, amps being coulombs per second, coulombs being many electrons, and the per second dimension is so important because when you're dealing with power, it always has to be continuous, 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 never stopping. And this came to 1,200 watts. So that was our first equation, and we didn't run it up to 15. The circuit breaker was at 15 or 20 amps, and we didn't want to go up there and blow the circuit or the fuse, so we kept it at 10. And so the most a resistance heater or hair dryer or toaster takes or consumes in the house is 10 amps and 1,200 watts. Let's go now and introduce uh, our second equation. Okay, so this is voltage times current equals power. Our second equation is I times R equal voltage. Now let's go translate this into the physical world. And once again, we know we know we have a waterfall, and the height of the waterfall is voltage, and that doesn't change. And we know that current I is the water flowing over the waterfall. And when we want to get a lot of current, we take the obstacles out of the way. Now the obstacles are the resistance, like rocks. So, if you think in an intuitive fashion that the rocks block the resistance, then you have this equation. So, let's assume that we're now talking about the, the 10 amps that we were drawing in the house. So, here we have 10 amps times 12 is equal to 120 volts. 10 times 12 equals 120. So when we, were, when we were pulling 10 amps through our circuits, through our house, we had dropped the resistance to 12 ohms. And that, that has to equal 120 because current times resistance equals voltage. And then let's assume that we were running a light bulb, which has one half of an amp. It's um, a 60 watt bulb, so half an amp. So then this resistance went up to 240 because it has to equal 120 again. So as this one goes down, this one goes up. So they, they, operate, they operate out of phase. And it kind of makes sense is the more rocks you have, the slower the, volt, the current the voltage, and the less rocks you have, the higher the current. Now, to get power, we're going we're gonna to take these two equations, I, R equals V, and we're going to combine them. We're going to combine them, and this is where the equation gets a little tricky. So we can substitute IR where the V is. So IR, then you have another I times I is equal to power. Let's look at, let's rearrange this equation. So you've got I squared times R equals power. And like we did in, in 
resistance heating with radiation, we had four T's multiplied times each other. You can do that in engineering. You can actually have current times current. And what this is saying is that if you want power, it's more important to drive the current up because it goes up twice as fast. So this wasn't always intuitive to me that you would want low resistance, but once again, think, and think about taking the racks out of the way, which is dropping the resistance and the current flies. So what we have are three equations. The first two, the first two are just you know, three parameters. Voltage times current equals power. Current times resistance equals voltage. Then you combine the two and you have I squared R equals power. Let's have a demo, let's have a physical reality of that in the form of a battery. So let's take a battery with its terminals, a car battery. It's just sitting there and nothing is happening. Now if you stick a, a screwdriver on this thing, so right across here you have a screwdriver, a handle, and you touch one side of the screwdriver to both sides at the same time, you have got a short. And a short means that you have zero resistance. And what happens there is we know if resistance is zero, then current is going to go flying up the, flying through the roof because there, is, there are 12 volts in the battery, which is a constant. So in this case, when you have a dead short or zero resistance, this number goes up twice as fast. It, it's doubling, it's squared. So even though resistance has dropped to zero, or very, very close to zero, this guy flies up and you get lots of power across your battery. You, a dead short, whenever you hear the word dead short, power is going up, things are possibly melting. Um, in this case, you will actually get the screwdriver to, to it might melt. It's, it's got so much current going through it. Now the other side of this is an extreme. When you have a battery, once again, our, our battery, a 12 volt battery is sitting there, and it's just sitting in the air, you, you'd say, okay, well, it doesn't seem like it's anything, but that actually is a circuit. The, there is a very high resistance in the air, millions and millions of ohms, and here we have our huge, and resist or current is almost zero. There's a zero. So this is a case where you have no power. And that would seem intuitive. It's like, well, if there's nothing hooked up, it, it couldn't have any power. But it actually is, there actually is a tiny amount of current going through the air, ever so small. It's, in, it's inconsequential. And resistance is huge. So they operate at a phase. And the thing always remember is that if you want power, you want to take those rocks out of there. And low resistance or a dead short, power goes way up. And that, that was a little tough for me because I always thought that maybe in like mechanical engineering, if you had an object that was very tough to move, it would have a lot of friction and you have to push really hard on it. And so I, I thought that, that there was some correlation between friction, this is kind of like friction, and, and power in mechanical engineering, but it, it behaves in a manner like this waterfall where it's, you've got, you've got a, a different equation and you take those racks out and power and current go through the roof. So this is a resistance. We're going to use this in the future because this resistance is going to get in our way as we're transmitting power from the steam power plant to the house. This is a guy that we waste heat on the transmission of power. This guy, we want to what? We want to make him. We want to work around him. Electrical engineers have some really cool tricks that they can do, and I will talk about them in the future. Okay, that's it.